Hello everyone. Welcome to the video series on interesting topics of modern C++ programming and in this particular video we will talk about monads in C++ using std optional. Now this feature is available in C++ 17 onwards but if you don't have C++ 17 compiler you can use boost optional which can work with 11 and 14 compilers and it is pretty much similar to what std optional does in fact std optional is adopted from boost optional okay so let's go ahead and see what is a monad so what is a monad the term monad has originated from functional programming languages and over the period of time it is now available in many other programming languages if you are aware of or have worked with programming languages like haskell or scala you know what I am talking about. There is something called maybe monad. So if you do not know what is monad, remember this term maybe. Maybe is extremely important to understand what is a monad. So let's go ahead and see in the code. But wait a minute. You know, you might be wondering that I didn't told you what is monad. I just said that uh, it is originated from functional programming. What it is? Believe me, if I tell you a textual description or try to define what is monad, you are going to freak out. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to show you some code and then it will be very easy for you to understand what exactly is monad, what exactly I'm talking about. But if you want to begin with some context, just remember the term maybe, maybe monad. Okay, so let's go ahead and see the code. Okay, so let's go ahead and start our coding. First thing first, to use std optional, we need to include this header file called optional. Now the ID I am using is Visual Studio 2019 and if you get some error while calling optional, like if some red line comes over here, that means that you haven't set the compiler. So to do that in Visual Studio, what you will do is that you will go to project, properties, go to language, and go to C++ language support. By default, it is, I guess, C++ 14. If default is selected, you need to select ISO C++ 17 standard, and then it will work, okay? And many other compilers, like for GCC, if you are not able to get it work, try to specify minus minus std equal to C++ 17. It should work, okay? If not, just write a comment, I'll try to help you out. Now, I have this particular code with me, uh, get value where I am taking an input parameter which could be either true or false. If it is true, I return 100. If it is false, I return minus 1. In the main program, what I am trying to do is that I am trying to call this function by passing true and I am checking the return if val is not equal to minus 1, print the value of val. Okay. So this is a very simple code. There is nothing wrong in this code and if I go ahead and run this code, it will run, okay. You can see the value is 100, right. And if I go ahead and pass false, you can see that nothing should be displayed and nothing is being displayed, okay. So this is the simplest possible code one can come up with and I know you understood. But what is the meaning of this particular function? Think carefully, let me just increase the form. What I am trying to do is that if I am getting input which is true, I am returning 100. But in other condition, I am either returning minus 1 or I can also return 0 and I can also return plus 1 or I can also return some minus long number stating that it is an error. Okay, so basically what I am trying to do is that I am trying to define a condition or success condition where integer does have the value or failure condition where integer doesn't have the value. If this thing is clear, let's proceed further. But if we assign minus 1 to integer, what will happen? Minus 1 is a valid value for an integer. Okay, an integer can contain minus 1, right? Which means that what we are trying to do over here is that we are assigning value to the integer, but we are assigning different value and we say that, okay, you know what, either minus one or in case of uh, smart pointers, null PTR is the value which decide whether the uh, integer should be accessed or not. 
and this is where std optional comes into picture std optional makes it easy to identify whether we are getting into a success condition and value is indeed assigned or no value is assigned so basically it's one real condition one error condition so how we are going to use it so instead of passing int you can say optional int okay in here you pass it as a initializer list okay and if it is not the case pass null out okay and in here also you take optional val and in here you just check if val the value is star val now let's call true okay which means that if I go ahead and call this function, what will happen? I should be getting 100 and I got it. Now, let's understand this code. You remember when I talked about monad, I told you that remember the term called maybe. If you remember that, you understood what is happening. If I add optional over here, it means that the return value may or may not be available. So when it is available, fine. When it is not available, I don't need to come up with a complicated logic that, okay, this value means it is available. This value means it is not available, okay? So in here, if true is passed as an input parameter, I am returning 100. Otherwise, I am returning the real error condition that the value is not available, which means that if you huge optional with any other parameter null of will always mean that value is not available and you don't need to come up with something like minus one means unavailable or minus hundred means available or zero means true one means false or anything like that okay and in here you are not checking on to return value you are just checking on to this std optional it is very simple but it makes programming very easy especially writing the complex logics and this is called monads monads means some value may or may not be present when i call this function okay so this is what monad is the way to remember monad is think about a monad as maybe maybe means if i am calling a function in expectation of a return value the value may or may not be present and the way I am getting it, I know it. I do not check the value of the return value to understand whether the value is indeed present or not. If it is null out, I'll just know that value is present or not. In here, I will never check if value equal to minus one. That means it's not present. If value is greater than zero, that means it's present. Okay. So that's all about monads. I hope and believe that I was able to explain the concepts of monad in the simplest and easiest possible way. If you have any queries or some concerns, please feel free to write in the comment section. I'll try to answer or some of the community member will try to answer ASAP. So thanks a lot people. Thanks for watching. Till the next time we meet. Thank you. Take care. Good day.